think you could get any more simple than this message here. It's very simple. Paul's address to Christians. Paul's address to Christians in Rome. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who, owe, who, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is? How it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep? For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in the reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentious, licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Here in the scripture reading, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The lesson today is divided into two sections. One, love one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then the second part of this reading says what? Love Christ. Hmm? Put, on Christ. put on Christ. Wake up from your slumber. Put on Christ. Do you know what time it is? For salvation has drawn near, right? Live as though you are living in the night. No, it's just as in the day. For the night has far gone, the day has arrived. That's the message. Done? We're all good? Let me tell you a story because how many of you heard of the um, rabbi's gift? Did you, did you ever hear the story about the rabbi's gift? No? Okay, let me tell you rabbi's gift. It's a story about um, this little town uh, a rabbi, um, he will lament how the, his congregation has diminished in membership and um, how he has lost a lot of members over the years. And not too far in the woods, there was a, a monastery. And likewise, in, the mon uh, in this monastery, the abbey and his uh, four monks that he um, uh, supervises, they've lived together for decades. There was a time when the monastery was packed with people, with a lot of monks, and, and, um, but now over the years, that institution has demised and has lost its members through death, and no young people seem to come and has joined the monastery. So you have a very, um, the situation, both mo uh, monastery and in the synagogue, where you have a very low me membership. And they're all contemplating whether they should close the, the monastery or the synagogue. And from time to time, a rabbi would go into the woods. Uh, there was a little cabin next to, uh, uh, not too far from monastery, and he would go and he would do his little retreat. And over the years, because of this uh, routine, um, the abbey and the monks have developed this psychic power, and they know that when the rabbis come into the woods, they will say, the rabbis is in the woods. The rabbis in the wood. In any case, they decided, the monks sat down with the abbey and said, listen, abbot, and said, you know, we have this uh, rabbi who always comes into the woods from time to time and he prays and he meditates. Maybe he has a words of advice for us to make our institution more lively again. Maybe, can you go and see uh, this rabbi and maybe uh, have a conversation with him and maybe he will have some advice for us? So the abbot decided, okay, He's in the woods. I'm going to go see him and talk to him. 
well, my good friend, come on in. He walks in, and the rabbi and the abbot, they sat together around the table. They had a glass of wine, and they chit-chatted. How are you doing with your uh, synagogue? How are you doing with your uh, monastery? They exchanged their pleasantries, and then finally uh, the abbot said, you know, we're going through some tough time right now because our institution is going down the hill. We're getting old. We're in our 70s right now. Where there are just five of us, including four brothers, and I don't see any future for us. When we, uh, we've got maybe another 10 years to go. I, I don't know what's going to happen. And, and so he lamented. And do you have any words of advice for us, Rabbi? And the rabbi looked at him and said, you know, I'm going through some same situation here. No one seems to come to synagogue anymore. We are getting older. No one's coming to our synagogue. With the rise of secularism and, and, and uh, with the rise of modernity, now it's post-modernity, right? right? Everything is post these days, post, <laughs> post-denominationalism, post-modernity, post, what is it, uh, colonialism, post, any other post? <laughs> post-economic, post-civilization. Now it's actually what we call post-Christianity. Okay? Times have changed, in other words. Times have changed. And now these religious institutions are going through some tough time. I have no words of advice for you. And they lamented and they cried. And the rabbi finally said, you know, before you go, maybe I do have something to say. I think one of the brothers in this monastery You've heard this story? Some of you are looking at this like, yes, I know the story. Maybe one of the brothers there is the Messiah. It's my time. And this, and Abbot didn't really understand what he meant, but he said, okay, one of us is the Messiah. So he went back to monastery. And all the brothers are waiting. John, Peter, I'm making these names up. John, Peter, (laughs) Philip, Andrew. They all waited for the abbot to come return and said, so what did the rabbi say? What word of wisdom, insights did he give you to tell us to make our institution alive again? And he said, I don't know. He just said, one of us is the Messiah that we're going to save this place. One of us is the Messiah. And they looked puzzled and said, one of us is the Messiah? Yeah, one of us here is the Messiah. Look around. One of us is the Messiah. And they were confused as the abbot was confused. And then days went by, weeks went by, a month went by, and finally the, the brothers began to think for themselves. And the word began to sink in their hearts and their minds and said, what if indeed one of us is the Messiah? Nah, Philip, he has a short temper. He can't be the Messiah. Andrew, he's so quiet. He never says words. And when he does speak, he always says the right thing. Maybe he qualifies as the Messiah. And Peter... Ah, he's weird. I don't think he's, he's the Messiah. But what if he is? He's always in solitude in prayer somewhere. I've, I've seen him pray. He has certain presence, although his behavior is off, but he's always praying. Maybe he's the Messiah. And each one of the brothers began to think for themselves and said, what if, what if he's the Messiah? And as they begin to debate and think for themselves, maybe that person is the Messiah. Maybe, oh, the abbot, he must be the Messiah. He's been with us for decades. He led this institution through some tough time, and maybe God has ordained him to be the Messiah to save this place. So they begin to think. And suddenly they begin to develop this extraordinary respect for each other. And they become, uh, the brothers become not only respect for each other, but they begin to respect and love and, and pay extra attention to each other 
brothers that they've been with for decades. It just so happens that the monastery was in a beautiful surrounding, and so from local towns, people would come up for their picnics and walk through the monastery and, and, and so forth. And they began to sense that people who were visiting the monastery began to sense this extraordinary aura among this, uh, in this little community of brothers. They would sit at a chapel to pray. They would join their worship. And one by one, gradually, they began to sense that something extraordinary was happening in this monastery. One joined. A year later, another two joined. Three years later, another four joined. A decade went by. And then once again, the monastery became a thriving community of loving faith community. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You've heard of this story before? The rabbi's gift? Now you've heard it. The rabbi's gift here is here among us. Now, we all know that Christ has said, love one another, right? If we take out the element of love in our faith community, then we take out the very heart of our faith, right? Love one another as I have loved you. We are a community called to love one another as Christ has loved us. And this love that we are called to love, it's not merely about a romantic love or a friendship kind of love, but it is a love that is unconditional. It is a love of God. And as a matter of fact, this love is so great, there's in no way we could measure up to this love because our human love is very broken, right? It's very conditional in many ways. But the love of God is unconditional. There's no ifs. Before we were born and one day when we cease to exist, the love of God was there and love of God will always be there. And the gift that we have received in Jesus Christ is that this love is very near to us and that we have access to this love that overflows to our living. And that is the gift of the Holy Spirit given to us, compelling us drawing us closer to that love that we may love one another. The communion we celebrate is the expression of that love of God in Christ Jesus. So may this love, may the gift of rabbi, may the gift of God's love be with each and every one of us here this day, that we may love one another, however imperfect, but the love of God is here. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious God, you have called us to love one another. You know that our love for each other is imperfect and have many shortcomings. Our loves are conditional, but your love is unconditional. You love us in spite of, and you continue to love us, to engage us, to reach out to us, and to lead us with your love that we may be fully alive as human beings. Teach us, O oh God, as we continue our journey of faith to learn more about this love, to strengthen and deepen our life in you. We thank you that we're not alone, but that we are living together as a faith community and to learn and engage in that love in a community of faith and to practice and share that love in all that we do and say. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is in our hearts as a gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.